Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez, and tonight we have a date with Baldigus. In fact, this is the Transformers Unite Warriors UW-EX Baldigus Japanese kanji. U-W-E-X, Japanese. So, I've opened this up already. This is the shipping case. But I haven't actually opened. Come on. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, do it. Yep, yep, come on. Come on, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. But I haven't opened this yet. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, as I said, I usually don't open things that have a window box. Now, this does have a window box. Uh, yeah, but it's got a salad box as well. And um, I just can't live without this being loose. So, let us free you from your plastic and cardboard prison. Front of the box. Back of the box. For people who don't know what this is, this is the um, Combiner Wars or Unite Warriors Bruticus. But it's done in the Baldigus deco. Baldigus was the Japanese name of the uh, Combiner which was a repaint of Bruticus, uh, seen in the R.I.D. Robots in Disguise uh, 2001 cartoon show, uh, also known as Car Robot in Japan or Transformers 2000. Uh, this came out, uh, I want to say this came out last year in 2018. Um, I'm just now getting to open it. Ah, a little bit of the bubbly. All right. Where's our knife? As you can see, it's sealed. And it's sealed. Let's go this side. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. Ah! Let's take a moment to uh, enjoy the smell of a new toy. Mmm, a beautiful bouquet. All right, let's adjust our camera. Instantly, we've got directions. It's in Japanese. And here we have the figures. Now, as they move away from plastic insert trays to cardboard next year uh, on the Hasbro side, I wonder if Takara will follow suit. 
because I can imagine it's just not going to look the same even even if the window box is cut in a similar style to the G1 where you can only see the figure. You still saw some of the styrofoam underneath and in like the uh, the Devastator reissue, which has a plastic insert, you see the plastic. So it'll be a little weird to see that cardboard underneath there if they go that route. All right, let's see. All right, so this is a two tray situation. All right, so there's the top tray, the bottom tray. There's tape all around it. So this comprises of six figure, of uh, five figures. Five figures become one combiner. It's got the, uh, the new feet, hands, it's pretty good. I also have the upgrade set for this somewhere. But let's go ahead and go all the way. So we've cut that side. I have a set of tools that I use just for opening toys. I don't use them for anything else. They're just for opening my toys. No, I don't have names for them or anything weird like that. It's just, uh, oh, you know, one thing I haven't used yet on the show, but that you should have in your, uh, in your toolkit, besides your knife, besides your snippers, is, believe it or not, a nail clipper. I didn't even have to cut this tape. This tape just peeled right off. Uh, yeah, trust me. You don't want to use them for your nails. You just want to have a pair of nail clippers in your tool box for opening toys. It's a lifesaver sometimes. Whoops. Whoops. And there we go. Cheers. Drinking Bud Light out of a champagne float does not improve the flavor. All right. Oh, let's see if I can remember the names. This was Tankor. Uh, I actually have the R.I.D. ones over here, right? So we can do a little compare and contrast. Now, this is the American ones, which were different colors from the Japanese ones. But it gives you a sense of where this came from. Roll bar. Rotor. And this is Movar, or Movor. Now, this is the big difference between the American and Japanese. For Armor Hide, check that out, right? I just don't understand how you justified that, because the cartoon was these colors, but... Oh, well. All right. Uh, one thing of note, because this is a Japanese release, this actually uses the um, very altered mold uh, for Blast Off, which uh, didn't get released in the United States until it got a special individual box release. Uh, it was the Blast Off, Repugnus, and Punch Counter Punch. Trent, Troop, and Greg Cephalak wanted to do a Shattered Glass Punch Counter Punch for Bacon and call him Kick Counter Kick, which I just think is brilliant. Why didn't that happen? All right, so look, there's some gold on here, right? Is there going to be some GPS? If you're not familiar with 
what GPS is. You might have heard that before. It's called gold plastic syndrome. And what that refers to is toys in the late 90s. I'm sorry, toys in the late 80s, early 90s that had plastic gold. Uh, your Pretenders, your G2 uh, Electros. Uh, the gold, it's, um, it breaks very easily, unfortunately. Let's see, how are we doing this? Let's go like that. I don't know, it's been such a long time since I've done this. I don't like transforming things on the show because it just takes me forever. Uh, one thing that is cool is the uh, attention to detail. It's got the upside down G2 Decepticon symbol. The American versions had a simple Decepticon symbol. works oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i get it now now usually i find that hashtag combiners are lacking in engineering but i will say this uh out of all the combiner cores this one the onslaught uh which has been redecoed and remolded numerous times is probably the best. Uh, now, what do we mean by deco? Deco is the paint applications that go on a toy. A redeco means you're taking the toy and you're just repainting it in a new way. And a retool means, all right, when you create a toy, you have to create a tool in order to have that toy manufactured. Uh, a metal tool, titanium, aluminum, etc. Now, a retool means you're going back and you're adjusting that tool, and that adjustment can be adding a gate, which will, let's say you have two heads, right? You have this head and you have an alternate head. You're going to shut the gate off to this head and produce that second alternative head. Uh, and the gate serves so that you're not making both heads so that you just have to throw one out at the end. So that's a retool. It's simple. Simple, simple, simple. Let's see. Look at that. Look at that. It's, it's working. It's working. Anybody else make transformer sounds when they were a little kid or uh, 40 years old? Uh. And you know what? One thing else that I'll give uh, Haztec credit for is... I do appreciate the simplicity of being able to take this right out of the box and being able to put this together in combined mode. I mean, it was all going well until I said that, and then it stopped going well. But that's my fault. So, even though it looks like it's loose, 
It's actually not. It's just me fumbling around with it because I'd like it to be perfect. This set was produced exclusively in Japan. I don't think it was an e-hobby exclusive. No. It was just an exclusive set in Japan. It was limited. These are a little hard to find nowadays. I think this is actually harder to find than the female combiner, female Decepticon combiner. Look how easy that was to put this guy together. You just got to appreciate that. Oh, something popped off. That was probably my fault. Oh, no. That's not my fault. Oh, are you kidding me? Yep. So, hey, you know, we're opening this thing. It's already cracked. It's cracked there. And this is a pressure fit panel that won't fit anymore because it snapped. Great. Awesome. Well, we'll leave that in the box. Beautiful. Um, hey, if you ever buy uh, this set from me, uh, look out for that one piece that's floating around the box. sucks the plastic is fragile the plastic is fragile and the head keeps popping off So I see what the issue is. It's this piece right here. It's not engineered correctly. This piece should be smooth. Right here, there's a nub. This shouldn't be here. It appears it's there for aesthetic purposes. It shouldn't be there. Oh, I see. So something pegs into that but I believe something pegs into that but that feels unnecessary that is unfortunate I'm, I'm digging this less and less now Last guy, Rotor. So the story of why R.I.D. was brought over to the United States, originally it was a Japanese exclusive toy line and show, but it was uh, brought over uh, for simple economic reasons. They were developing uh, uh, TransTech at the time, and... They just couldn't nail it down in time for a whole toy line to be debuted, marketed, 
and uh, put on the shelf and all the fanfare that goes along with that. It just didn't make a lot of sense when they had R.I.D., or as it was known then, car robots, uh, ready to go in Japan. So they did the smart thing and just uh, released uh, R.I.D. over here. And that's it. That's bald to guess. It would be cool to get this in the US as like the Arctic camo or the desert camo version. But I'm gonna mess around with this guy a little bit more and then I'll put him into the display case and uh, I'll post pics online. Thank you for joining me. Together, we have cut the tape.